The American yes, Civil I War have... is the defining event in the history of the United States. Oh, shit. After fighting from April 1861 until April 1865, the southern Confederate states lay down their arms to the northern United States. More than 600,000 people are killed. Based on the current population, that number today is equivalent to 6 million deaths. The Battle of Gettysburg occurs in the middle of the war. It is often called the turning point of the war, yet it did not end the war both the largest and the bloodiest battle of the war, with 165,000 men engaged and 51,000 casualties killed, wounded, and missing. Gettysburg is the closest the Confederacy comes to winning the war. Four months after the battle, President Abraham Lincoln delivers the Gettysburg Address here at the Soldiers National Cemetery. Now considered the nation's most famous speech Lincoln's 272 words redefine America. The war begins in April 1861, when the Confederates fire on Fort Sumter in Charleston Harbor, South Carolina. Both sides expect the war to end quickly. Lincoln believes the 75,000 men he calls to serve for three months will be sufficient to put down the rebellion. He is wrong. Two years later, in the summer of 1863, there will be 51,000 casualties here at Gettysburg alone. At 7.30 a.m., Union Lieutenant Marcellus Jones of Illinois borrows a soldier's carbine rifle and says, let me have the honor of opening the ball. He rests the rifle across a fence rail. A column of rebel infantry crosses Marsh Creek. He fires the first shot of the greatest battle ever fought in the Western Hemisphere. Gettysburg begins. On the afternoon of July 1st, both General Lee and General Meade order their armies to race to Gettysburg. When he hears of the battle, Meade responds, Good God, if the enemy get Gettysburg, we are lost. Gettysburg, July 4th, 1863. Dreadful silence. It rains. People crawl out of their cellars, blinking in the gloomy light, trying to find their neighbors, food, news, life. Strange, awful odors overpower the air and seem to be growing, trying to imprison all in the unbearable stench. Excrement from perhaps 165,000 men and more than 50,000 horses has been left behind in the area. War had come to them. Then it had gone and left the horror behind. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, 
we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you.